second generation air tags and two gigabit speeds from Starlink. It's a big day for twos. Let's get into it. According to Live Mint, the second generation AirTag is anticipated to come soon and feature an enhanced wireless chip, which improves connectivity and makes it much more precise when paired with Apple products. According to the report, its range is expected to increase, enhancing reliability in locating items. Now, how do AirTags actually work? Well, they use a combination of Bluetooth and ultra wideband, UWB, to triangulate the location of a lost device. So what's Bluetooth? Bluetooth is a 2.4 gigahertz frequency hopping technology for personal area networks. It's low power, it's short ranged, normally goes you know, 30, 60, maybe if you're lucky 90 feet, and it's not terribly fast. Two megabits, three megabits is kind of the top. It is made for headphones, keyboards, mice, microphones. It's not for streaming video, but AirTags, appropriate, little devices. The other thing about Bluetooth is it's very, very standardized. You buy a device from one company with Bluetooth, you can use it with their competitor stuff, right? A Bluetooth keyboard works wherever. Very, very standardized, and that's important. The other more shiny new technology is ultra-wideband. It's called ultra-wideband because it is a radio that sends out a 500 megahertz wide signal. Bluetooth sends out a one megahertz wide signal. This is big. It's huge. It's somewhere, you know, in the band from 3 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz, but it sends a very short burst across huge numbers of frequencies at once. Actually, low power per megahertz, right? Because its power is spread out across that. So if it runs into some other traditional radio using those frequencies, the other radio isn't interfered with because they tend to make these sharp spikes. And so just a little bit of the ultra wideband gets lost. So the really cool thing about ultra wideband is that signal is so wide and the burst is so short that it becomes possible to very, very accurately time exactly how long the radio wave took to get from one radio to the other. And since speed of light is a constant, that lets you know the exact distance between them. So now you see where it works with air tags. The phone can tell exactly how far away the air tag is once it's in ultra wide band range. So as you move around, it can triangulate. And if other people's phones, they're increasingly starting to coordinate it, they can, again, triangulate and find where the device is. So it's a really cool technology that's really appropriate here. Now, before I talk about Starlink, though, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Thanks, Alex. I'm Brian from Speedify. And Speedify is an app for all platforms that's designed from the ground up to be the best mobile VPN. So it's secure and it lets you combine all of your internet connections, cellular, Wi-Fi, ethernet, even the cellular connections of devices near you. It's available for phones, computers, and even routers. You can download it from our website, the app store, or the play store. So download it today. Thanks, Brian. So Starlink says that two gigabit speeds are coming soon. If you have a Starlink now, it's, Probably about 250 megabits down when life is good. On a good day, I'll see 250 down, 50 up on mine. Although that's best case. It goes up and down over the course of the day. And a lot of times it's not that good. So according to speedtest.net, the average speed that people actually get over the Starlink is about 79 down and 10 up. Maybe a little lower than I would have expected, but the right ballpark. Gwen Shotwell at SpaceX said that Starlink can get to gigabit speeds now if you have more than one dish. How are you gonna combine those together? Perhaps using Speedify? She didn't say that though. So how is Starlink going to achieve two gigabit speeds? They weren't very clear, but Shotwell says they'll be able to accomplish this with smaller beams, more capacity per beam, and lower latency. So that means new, better dishes, and probably a lot more satellites. She also went ahead and compared Starlink's cycle of increased capacity to Moore's law, which observed that the number of transistors on a computer chip doubles every two years. So I guess she is saying that we should expect to see Starlink double its capacity every two years. For a few years, this may be true, but I think she's gonna run into some caps. Make sure you subscribe for more tech deep dives like this.